Let us pray. Holy God, thank you for being there for us. Thank you for the wonderful works you are doing in our lives. Receive all the glory, all the honor, dominion, and majesty. Holy God, speak to us. By the power of your spirit, lift our faith up. In Jesus' name we pray. Shout hallelujah. Today we are talking about the eyes of who? The eyes of the Father. This Father we are talking about today is not the usual Father we have on earth. Yeah, not our earthly Father, but this one is our heavenly Father. Jesus Christ taught us that we should address God as our Father. The test. Oh. Psalm 34, verse 15, and then we will add verse 7. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. 7. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him, and delivereth them. The Bible says that God does not sleep, he does not slumber. Psalm 121 verses uh, 3 to 5. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The eyes of the Lord do not blink. God does not blink his eyes. He watches over us at all times. God is so careful when it comes to taking care of his children and protecting his children. Jesus Christ said that God knows the number of the hair of our head that none falls to the ground except God gives the permission. We, that we that own the heads of our head, they fall and we don't even take note a lot of times. But God knows the number, they are counted, and none of them falls to the ground except God permits it. God does not sleep. He never slumbers. In fact, in Isaiah chapter 49, 15 and 16, he asks a question, can a woman forget the baby at her breast? She may forget. People said no. When you sleep, don't you forget about your baby? Eh? If you are walking in a corridor and the ceiling broke open, and coats of fire pour upon you. Which one will you remember first? In Africa, many of us will back our baby. Where? Before you remember your baby, you will first of all remove the coats, some of the coats that poured upon you. You will remove them first. Before you not remember, oh, my baby, oh, my baby, oh, my baby, oh. The Bible says, though she may forget, me, God, I will not do what? I will not forget you. Your words are ever before me. He said, I have a graven you on the palms of my hands. It means, engraving means that God used a sharp object eh, to write your name. Not writing, but engrave, dig. That is it. Description of what God is saying. He likes how he remembers you. How he takes care of you. How much he has you in mind. He likens it to taking something like a chisel and digging his palm. Digging his palm to put your name there. Is there any name? Is there any day in this world? You don't look at your palm. In fact, the place we look at most 
in the whole of our bodies. It's where? Your palm. Every time, every time you look at your palm. We are so careful. What about the place we wash most with water? Where? Our palms. God said he has engraven you. He engraved you. Your name on the palms of his hands. And every time you are there, God does not sleep. He does not slumber. We humans, we sleep. Sometimes like a baby. And we forget about our environment. Um, so what the essence of the summary of what we should take home today from this message is that we should believe God enough to the extent of trusting him totally. The Bible tells us that we should not put our trust in men. But many times when people ask us, do you trust me? We say what? We say yes. Yes, yes. The frequency of the number of yes you say has a lot to determine the frequency of the number of times people will break your heart. Because if you trust anyhow, they break your heart anyhow. They break your heart anyhow. I'm not saying we should not trust people. Love trusts. Love trusts. We should trust, but not anyhow. So if we can have any iota of trust for a human being, how much more do we supposed to trust our God? How many of us go, will go to a motor park and then the vehicle they want to use to take you to Abuja, they write learner on it. How many of us will enter? Eh? You want to travel. The front of the vehicle, there is learner. At the back of it, you see big L, Lena. You will enter Abby and sleep very well, right? <laughs> but what about when you board a plane? Will you sleep? When you board an aeroplane, eh? you are flying for like 12 hours. Will you sleep? You will sleep. <laughs> hey, okay, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something that will shock you. Listen, there was a survey. Survey was carried out a few years ago. And 56% of pilots agreed that they have slept during flights. When they are in charge of the aeroplane. Eh? When you see the pilot dressed very well, you say, yes, yes, this one. He knows the job. And when they described him, when they described him to you that this one has over 300 hours of flight experience, you say, yes, this one, in fact, he is also a sleeper. He will sleep. How many of us will go and monitor him, whether he's sleeping or not? Will you go and watch him? And you think everything is okay and you are sleeping and snoring. Eh, you are flying to London. Your pilot is sleeping. No? <laughs> but the God that washes over Israel, he does not sleep. He does not slumber. Okay, listen again. 29% of pilots said they have woken up from sleep and look at their partner, the co-pilots, and discover that they were also sleeping. Are you shocked? If you can trust a pilot, how many of us will go, pilot, uh, I want to be checking on you every 30, 30 minutes. And someone even said that a pilot sleeping during flight has its own level of safety. So because of that, I know many will sleep more. Do you trust God? Do you trust God? Do you believe that God does not sleep? Do you believe that he does not slumber? How many of us can, if God could 
be in form of man, and then we allow God to take us to our destination. Do you know that the Holy Spirit has been with us all this while? When you go to God and say, God, uh, I, how is this business? God speaks to us. How is this man coming from a hand in marriage? God speaks to us. Listen, Dan Gote, eh? Dan Gote, the richest man in Africa, was once a young man. Eh? There was a time he had no bank accounts. Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, the same thing. They were young men. Today, they have money. So much money. Please, let us trust God. To the extent that if he tells us this one, don't look at the present, look at the future. Even though he has no money today, look at tomorrow. Let us trust God and take him for his word. For your business, trust him. Wherever you go, trust him. His eyes don't blink. How much more? Sleeping or slumber. Be on your feet, let us pray. Lord, we believe in you. We take you by your words. That with you, we will get to our promised land. It doesn't matter the Egyptians on the way. It doesn't matter the Red Sea on the way. It doesn't matter the dry wilderness and the dangers in the wilderness. So long as we hope in you alone. So long as we do not rely on our human wisdom. So long as we trust in you, we believe that we are there already. And for as many that are trusting in you to show up in their lives, Father, reveal yourself to them. Those who don't know you and they are outside this promise because everything I just said now is about for your children alone. Lord, help them to know you. Help them to become your children so that they can enjoy all these things, all these promises. Jesus' name we pray.